This is a quick video over the transmembrane electrical potential and how it is generated. Most people believe that it is generated because of the sodium potassium pump. That is only partly true. They think that the sodium potassium pump pumps out three sodium ions, so we have three sodium ions being pumped out, and then only two potassium ions come in. So if we're pumping out three positive charges and only bringing back in two positive charges, that makes the outside positive. But that's not the reason why, and it also makes the inside negative, that's not the reason why there's a negative 60 millivolts for a cell at rest. The reason why is because of the concentration gradients that the sodium potassium pump generates. The sodium potassium pump just keeps pumping ions across. So it creates these relatively large concentration gradients. For example, go across here. The sodium concentration on the outside of the cell, so the sodium concentration is around 300, and it varies from cell to cell, millimoles per liter. The potassium concentration is around 20 millimoles per liter. Now on the inside of the cell, this is the outside, out, in, so on the inside, the sodium concentration is relatively low, it's around 20 millimoles, millimoles per liter, and the potassium has a concentration of around uh, 400 millimoles per liter. And this, again, these numbers vary from species to species, but if a cell is alive, if it is alive, it will have a higher concentration of sodium on the outside than potassium than on the inside, and potassium will have a higher concentration on the inside than on the outside, if the cell's alive. If it doesn't, it is most likely dead. So how do these voltages actually occur? Well, it's actually due to diffusional forces working against electrical forces. So we know things want to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. So the potassium ions are wanting to go through the potassium channel and go out, and the sodium ions want to go through the sodium channel and come in because of their concentration gradients. So let's just, for right now, let's assume that the sodium channel is completely shut. It is closed, doesn't work, completely shut down. Now that leaves the potassium channel open, so potassium is just going to start diffusing through. Remember, potassium channel only lets potassium through. It, I mean, I guess on a rare occasion a sodium ion can go through, but 10,000, 10,000 potassium ions have to go through before one sodium ion can go through. It, it likes the, it, it likes potassium 10,000 times more than it does sodium. But anyway, so as the potassium ions go through, they create a slight positive charge. So there becomes a positive charge across the membrane. And then there comes a point where this side becomes so positive that the potassium doesn't want to cross the membrane anymore, where the electrical gradient is pushing on, it's pushing against the chemical gradient. They're equal. So the, I mean, the sodium, it wants to get out of this high concentration gradient, but it doesn't want to be in this positive area. So that's when they're equal. There's actually ways to measure these gradients, and they're called Gibbs free energy. And when Gibbs free energy is positive, Gibbs free energy is positive, that means it wants to leave the cell. Leave cell. When Gibbs free energy is negative, it wants to enter the cell. So, into the cell. When it's zero, Gibbs free energy is equal to zero, it doesn't want to do anything, it wants to stay put. Stay put. So how do we actually calculate these values? Well, let's calculate the Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy for a potassium concentration gradient. And it is equal to R, the ideal gas constant, times the temperature, times the natural log of the concentration on the inside of the potassium, on the inside of the cell of potassium, and outside of the cell of potassium. And for us, in our system, for a cell that's alive, this is a positive value. So that's positive. Now let's calculate the Gibbs free energy for the electrical gradient of potassium. It is equal to 
the charge of the ion times, so for potassium and sodium it's a positive 1, times Faraday's constant, times the voltage across the membrane. So the total, the total Gibbs free energy of potassium, of potassium is equal to its Gibbs free energy because of due to the concentration gradient plus Gibbs free energy due to the electrical gradient. If this is positive, then this must be negative for this total thing to equal zero. And remember, voltage is red from the inside out. If it's positive on the outside, that means it has a negative voltage. Negative on the outside, it has a positive voltage. So right now, right now it's positive on the outside, so there's a negative voltage. So what's the voltage required for the potassium ions not to want to cross the cell anymore? So that's when Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. What voltage is that? So what's this voltage? And it's and I believe it is, the voltage is approximately a negative 98 millivolts. So the, the voltage across the membrane, which is highly positive on the outside and negative on the inside, highly positive, I mean, there's a lot of, and negative on the inside is a negative 98 millivolts. So it takes a negative 98 millivolts for these, uh, for this concentration, 400 millimoles per liter on the inside, from wanting to go to a low concentration. So that's the voltage required to keep it from wanting to diffuse across the membrane to a low concentration. But I said cells had a, a cells at rest had a voltage of about negative 60 millivolts. Why is it not negative 98? Well, that's because the sodium channel is leaky. Or another way of thinking in it, thinking of that is, is that this channel actually shuts off. Like there's parts in it that can actually read the voltage across the membrane and it shuts off. But there's also some sodium channels that open up just a little and a few sodium ions can cross. So for, let's say if we had a hundred sodium channels, a hundred sodium channels open, open, there would be five, or I mean a hundred potassium channels open, potassium channels open, there would be five sodium channels open. Open. And so that, that, so that kind of levels out around a negative 68 millivolts, because when sodium goes from its concentration gradient, or goes with its concentration gradient, because it's going from a high concentration gradient to a low concentration gradient, it decreases the voltage on the outside of the cell. So before it was positive. So as sodium ions go from the outside to the inside, it, they begin to take positive charges and bring them to the inside. So that makes the outside a little bit, makes the outside negative and the inside positive. And I will continue on in the next video. So I want to continue on talking about the sodium and potassium channels. I just did a video that's prior to this. should have a part one somewhere on the screen. Click on that if you haven't seen that part. So what happens when the sodium channel is open and the potassium channel is closed? So this is closed and it's no longer running. Sodium's going to go from its high concentration to a low concentration. So it's going with its concentration gradient. So it's going down its concentration gradient. And as it goes down, it takes a positive charge. This is Sodium's a positively charged ion and it brings it down to this lower part, so that makes this lower part positive and this upper part negative. So it does the opposite of what the potassium channel does. The sodium channel, when it's open, it makes the cell have a positive voltage. So it actually levels out at around, I believe, uh, 30 millivolts, somewhere around there. When the potassium channels are all open, you get around an, a positive 30 millivolts. So right here, it's the same concept, except it's a little bit different. Now instead of having potassium, we have sodium. So I can try to change that to sodium. So these all become sodium now. Sodium. Sodium. I should probably erase these, but I'm, I'm lazy. I'll erase this one. So the electrical gradient of sodium. So this is the 
the driving force due to the, due to the, the electrical gradient, and this part represents the driving force due to the chemical gradient. And that's actually where it's chemical, electrochemical, these two gradients working together to get the electrochemical potential, or electrochemical gradient. So what's the voltage required to keep sodium from crossing the membrane? So when will the when will the electrical gradient be so strong that it pushes back against the sodium gradient? And that value is around a negative 30 or a positive 30 volts. So remember this here's here's why it flips. Now that we're doing with the Gibbs free energy of sodium, free energy of the, of the sodium concentration gradient, so the concentration of sodium on the outside is bigger, big, bigger than the concentration on the inside, so N. And this is a logarithmic function, so this would actually become a negative value, so that's no longer positive. This becomes negative. So the only way for there to be some type of equilibrium between the between the concentration gradient and electrical gradient is for the electrical gradient to flip and become positive. So now the electrical gradient for sodium must be a positive voltage. So that's also, since sodium and potassium share the same type of charge, they're both positive one charges, The that's equal to the potassium gradient. So so we could actually think of it as just an electrical gradient overall instead of just saying this is the electrical gradient for sodium, this is the electrical gradient for potassium. The only difference where it really starts changing is when you start dealing with ions that have two charges or just a negative charge. Where say let's say we're dealing with chloride. Chloride, this would become a negative one. So then we'd be we'll be dealing with something a little bit different. So what's the voltage so the voltage required to keep the to keep the sodium ions, which are in a high concentration, from diffusing to a low concentration, is 30 millivolts. Or it's actually a little higher than that. This is the cell when the sodium channels are all open are at 30 millivolts. So the, the actual value is a little bigger. And we could actually calculate what the actual voltage required for the sodium would be if we found this value and this value. And we could actually get the electrical gradient if all the sodium channels were open continuously. We could get the electrical gradient required to push them back. But again, this, they, the sodium channels close really quickly, so you only get around 30 millivolts. So 30 millivolts. Hopefully I have explained in somewhat of a decent fashion on why you can have some ions move across this way and make it positive, or make it negative, and some ions move this way and make it positive. So it's due to these concentration gradients, due to the sodium potassium pump. If we didn't have these pump, we didn't have the sodium potassium pump, we would not have these concentration gradients. Even though the sodium potassium pump generates a little bit of a voltage across the membrane, it's very small in comparison to these channels opening up and allowing these ions just to fly through. And remember, all right, I may have not even told you. The amount of ions going through these channels is relatively small, like the number of ions are small in comparison to the total number that are inside and outside of the cells. I mean, so let's say we had the we had the sodium channel open, it'll be open for a little bit, and it would cause that negative, it would cause the voltage to drop to, or increase to 30 millivolts. The number of these ions, as the way I've, the way I've drawn them, you probably only need three for that. Now you need more, but I mean, like, you wouldn't. It wouldn't change the concentration of sodium on the outside of the cell or on the inside very much at all. The concentrations stay stable, so they're always around. I believe, I have it over here. Yeah, they're always around these values. Uh, I mean, they don't change too much because remember, these, the sodium potassium pumps, ATPAs, are always running. They're just constantly running, so they're always keeping the concentration gradient stable. And I believe that is all I have for the, basically the electrochemical gradient.
and how it generates a voltage across the membrane.